The Wittenberg Tigers get set to take on Ohio Wesleyan at Edwards Mauer Field. It is week nine of 10 games for Jim Collins' team. Wittenberg and Ohio Wesleyan moments away from kickoff. We welcome you in on the Tigers Sports Network alongside the coach, Jim Scobie. I'm Sam Monachino. Glad you're tuned in wherever you may be. You're Sam Monachino. I'm Sam Monachino, Scott. <laughs> I am Scott Leo. He's Sam Monachino. The coach, Jim Scobie, is here as well. The Tigers will kick off to start this game. It feels so good, to actually, that you did that because one day when I was calling a volleyball game, I was with J.J. Weissenberger, and I called him uh, Braden Carey. And I said, I said, because I'm so used to calling games with Braden, and I, saw, I said to J.J., you know, I'm here in the booth with Braden, and he looked at me like I had just... I had stolen something from him that he cared about a lot. So. Guys, that happens a lot when you're getting old. Okay? Yeah, I've probably, probably done that more than I know, but there was one time I was hosting a show, and my co-host, my usual co-host, was not there, so I was solo, and I introduced him anyway because <laughs> I was just so used to no, yeah. absolutely. introducing both of exactly. us. And so now that we've sorted out who is who, <laughs> we can also tell you the Tigers are in red, the Bishops are in white, and we are just about ready for kickoff on a very unusual usual November Saturday afternoon here in Springfield where the temperatures are above normal for for the first week of November yet we are dealing with a wind advisory We're talking 20 to 30 mile per hour winds coming out of the south end zone and as the Tigers tee the ball up at the 35 yard line it immediately blows right off the tee and so coach Scobie the wind will be a factor today whether you're offense defense or special teams we're going to be talking about it yeah there's no doubt and I think that it's critical to to make sure that you run the football with something Wittenberg has done really well all year um, you know the last couple games they've struggled with third downs in key situations they haven't been able to get the first downs today is important they've got to be able to uh, keep the chains moving and they've got to be able to finish that's something that really uh, Jim Collins I talked to him this past Tuesday he really thinks his team has got to get better in those areas and certainly um, this is an Ohio Wesleyan team that can do a little bit of everything. Their offense and defense are very good. So I do think the wind will come into play, fellas. Nick Bowman's opening kickoff is his best of the year <laughs> by quite a bit as it clears the end zone by about seven yards with the wind at his back. And so Ohio Wesleyan will start at their own 25-yard line. Caden Bozas, the uh, starting quarterback for the Bishops. Black helmets with the red OWU on the sides. And on the first play from scrimmage, it'll be a screen pass. The junior quarterback will start the day one for one, and Ohio Wesleyan will pick up close to five yards as Jackson Gifford, the sophomore tailback, makes the catch and moves uh, up towards the 30-yard line. Ohio Wesleyan has been extremely good at times offensively but it's a matter of consistency for the bishops there is a flag down and it's going to be a hold against ohio wesleyan this is an offense sam that for ohio wesleyan if if they could put it together week after week with some help from the other um the other uh, position groups they would be able to say that they're in the mix for a conference title and so you know, they've been awfully close on uh, on numerous occasions. Here's a handoff uh, to Alston, the receiver, coming to the near side. He's going to be upended back at the 16, essentially no gain. No better case in point than 
their loss to DePaul, where the Bishops jumped out early and it looked like they were going to knock off the defending conference playoff representatives, but they couldn't hold on. Well, I think you have two teams that are very similar actually this season, both coming in at four and four. Ohio Wesleyan over the years that I've been here has been an incredibly strappy team and they've always been in these games competitive because they play the game the right way. But right now penalties putting them behind the sticks and that's going to derail about any team. Yeah and uh, speaking of being behind the sticks they try to establish the ground game here deep in their own territory on a handoff to Jackson Gifford and he'll be tackled at the 15 a loss of one and so just like that. Ohio Wesleyan is faced with third and 20. You like seeing Wittenberg come out. They're physical. They got, you know, one of the things they talked about this week was they have to man up. They've got to be able to stop the run and force Ohio Wesleyan to throw the football. Their first time they threw it was a short pass. Look for a lot of short passes today because the wind being in their face. No question. And on third and long, quarterback steps up in the pocket and takes off. He'll bounce it out to the left side across the 20. And Boza will be pulled down there, being chased by uh, a couple of Tiger defenders and near where the tackle was made, a flag is down again. Probably going to get him on a horse collar right there and that's just something you can't do if you're a Wittenberg defender. You know that you have 28 yards to basically play with, tackle him around the ankles and right there giving them a free 15 yards. Yeah, Caden Booza is their quarterback, and he uh, is, is a pretty good quarterback. He's got 18 TDs, but he can also run it. He's uh, had 44 uh, rushes for 253 yards, two touchdowns, and he showed you his speed and quickness to get to the outside and pick up the first down. Yep, Booza, 6'2", 195 from Winchester, Virginia. His team gets bailed out by that horse collar tackle, and so they get to keep this drive going. And... The Bishops will put it on the ground here with Booza calling his own number and racing into Wittenberg territory to the near side and goes out of bounds at the Tiger 42. So that is a pickup of 16. And now all of a sudden that penalty kind of flips the script here and Ohio Wesleyan has some momentum. One thing about running the football, it's about numbers. You know, it's really all about numbers. And when you have a running quarterback, boy, you have got a, a lot of positives going your way because they can't match up with you. And you've got to be able to stop that guy, especially if he can run it. And Booz has shown you two straight times where he's been able to really make plays. Here's a handoff to Gifford trying to bounce it out. He will get to the 40. Maybe the 39-yard line on this carry. Tiger tackle made, tackle made by, number one, Anthony Pedro. by Anthony Pedro. And Eli Rennick was in there as well. This is a Wittenberg team that looks a little bit like the walking wounded with a bunch of injuries here late in the season coming off of a just a devastating loss at Worcester last week, blowing a 33-7 lead and falling to the Scots for the first time in over a decade. Here's a handoff on second down and seven straight ahead. Gifford down to the Tiger 37, and here comes another third down. Adversity, Jackson guys. Gifford is their main go-to guy in the running game. Of course, he uh, he comes in with uh, 140 rushes for, five, for 566 yards. He's got six TDs, so uh, I think short yardage, he's the man, but Look for Booza when they need somebody to pick up a big play running the football. This is certainly a passing down. From the shotgun, Booza will fire. Left side, the catch is made. Uh, but I believe the receiver went out of bounds. Josh Hurst came back in to catch it, which is why a flag came down. Now the Bishops, a couple of folks pointing that it's against Wittenberg. So let's see, because it looked like the flag was being dropped on the sideline where the receiver went out of bounds. The receiver was forced out of bounds, but he caught it inbounds and the play should have continued, I think. So the rule right there is you're supposed to reestablish yourself in bounds, and I don't think that he took the proper steps no, to be able so. to reestablish. Yes, if you're pushed well, out of bounds, you can go back in. But My question would be, why would they blow the play dead when he caught it? He was in bounds. If it's a legal catch, he should have been able to run. Almost four minutes gone in this one. And the handoff will go to Gifford, bouncing out to the left, down to the 22, a gain of a yard. Ohio Wesleyan going into the wind. And it is by far the most substantial wind we've seen at Edwards Mauer Field this year for a game, coming right through that south end zone, kind of creating a, a tunnel 
like effect as it uh, we were watching the kickers warm up before the game and down in that south end zone it was a disaster here's Booza and he will keep it cuts it back at the 20 and on second down and 10 gets three yards to the 20 yard line it'll bring up a third down and seven Right there, there is a similar play that Coach Scope pointed out earlier where they kind of do a fake counter play where the running back fakes to one side goes and doesn't get the ball, and then he's that lead blocker for Booza, which is a very effective play because, as Coach mentioned, you know, you're getting more hats than the defense has. If you have that extra blocker and your quarterback's able to make an athletic play and get to a third and manageable, that's very effective if you're an offense on staying on schedule. So third down seven from the 20. Ohio Wesleyan's converted on a couple of third downs in this drive. The first one was a penalty that allowed them to move the sticks. Handoff goes to Gifford and he'll be short. Needed to get inside the 14. He's taken down at the 17 yard line. Stop made by Levi Morrison for the Tigers. And guys with the wind right now, this is a four down yeah, no situation. Doubt. You can't kick it at all. We, we watched the, uh, as you said, Scott, we watched them try to kick some field goals. I'm you not can't sure do you it. would even attempt to kick an extra point right now in the South, it's I agree. let alone any type of a field goal from distance. 9-11 to go in the first. Bishops have had it for almost six minutes. They started this drive on their own 25. Fourth down and four from the Tigers 17. Booza claps his hands, snatches the snap and fires and going down to his knees and making the catch at the 12 is Al Alston. Did he get it? He did. He gets the first down. He uh, gets it by about a yard and a half. And so the Bishops keep the drive alive. So not only have they been able to move the sticks on some third downs, they will do it on a fourth down here. You know what, Jaquille Austin, he's the second best receiver on this team, but what he did so well was he got to the chain. He was able to go a couple, maybe a yard, maybe a half yard to pick up that first down and a nice job by Ohio Wesleyan. And they continue to run the football right up the middle. Yep, Gifford straight ahead down to the eight yard line. How about this drive for Ohio Wesleyan when at the beginning of the drive, they were behind the chain Chains, a penalty put them in bad shape. That horse collar penalty may prove to be large here wow. by the time this drive is over. Well, an offense is all about being in a rhythm, right? We saw it last with time we were at home with the offense for Wittenberg not being in great rhythm. And it's certain plays by defenses that can either keep you out of rhythm or put you back in rhythm. And that horse collar play gives them more opportunities to find something that they feel comfortable with. So right now, Ohio Wesleyan very comfortable with trying to establish that power run game up the middle and then try and hit it outside with either a quick pass or a Booza uh, outside run. Brandon Planey is the injured Ohio Wesleyan player from their offensive line. That's the stoppage here before this second down and six from the eight. And it is again a busy day here on the Tigers campus. The Wittenberg volleyball team will play for the NCAC title tonight at five o'clock. They were winners earlier just behind us in uh, Pam Evans Smith Arena. So Sam, you'll have the call of that one? Yes, yes, and it, I mean, it's such an honor to be able to call great programs, you know, and, and you guys have understood that calling football and basketball for so long, but this, this women's volleyball program that's been built here over the years is just so impressive to constantly every year get everyone's best shot and consistently come out stronger because of it. And obviously they're gonna have a huge matchup tonight. Second down and six from the eight. Booza will work from the gun. Pump fake, waits. Here comes pressure, now flushed. He's gonna run left and look towards the end zone. He will fire it to the back of the end zone. It's gonna be broken up. It was intended for Gifford and for the Tigers. It was Ethan Adkins, I believe, on coverage. Ball got broken up in the back corner of the end zone to force a third down, but there is an injured Tiger. And it was the defensive back who was giving chase back there, covering. Again, you know, this is an OU team that, you know, they like to go to two people in this situation. Of course, the quarterback, uh, Caden Booza, you saw where Wittenberg's defense flushed him out of the pocket, but you had a sense that he could probably run for a little bit of distance. So, you know, again, they're going to look to Booza. Their, their best receiver is Josh Hurst. 
and he's got eight touchdowns uh, inside the red zone. So, again, a, a tremendous job by the Tigers. They've got to put pressure on the quarterback, and they've got to keep him uh, inside. They can't let him get to the outside and make a move. So, big uh, setup for the Tigers. This would be a great stop to force them uh, from getting in the end zone. Actually, it was number 29 on coverage, not 28, and that's the injured Tiger. And so maybe Tyler Van Meter or Alex Scher, M.E., who was on coverage, both linebackers, to wear that number for the Tigers. Here's a handoff on third and six. Running right is Gifford, and he'll be tackled at the eight. So maybe a yard. Again, Gifford toting the pigskin on this first drive for the Ohio Wesleyan battling bishops. Final NCAC game of the season for the Tigers. They will play a non-conference game next week to close out the season. Play against Hilbert College next Saturday here. Ohio Wesleyan four and two in conference play after hammering Oberlin last week, 77 to nothing. Trying to get back in the win column again today on the road. Booza on fourth and six. Here comes pressure. No holding call. Should have been one. And Booza will have to throw it away. The Tiger defense will get a stop. The man providing the pressure was Mike Knock, and he got held big time trying to get through. It was uh, Brock Bayer who was blocking him. It was a bear hug from the Ohio Wesleyan offensive lineman. Now it won't matter in the end because Wittenberg does get the stop. Ohio Wesleyan turns it over on downs. This was a near eight minute drive to begin the game. It'll be Wittenberg ball. Well, it's the LeBron effect, right? Or those big shack of shack like players when you get so much movement up on the front line, sometimes offensive linemen get away with doing a little bit more because you are so physically imposing. Mike Knock this entire season has had such great success that referees aren't going to give him calls like that even though they probably should. Miles Johnson gets the start at quarterback for the Tigers and hands it off. On first down, this is Garrett Gross. Johnson, the six-foot senior, the 200-pounder, in in place of Colin Brown, who has been the starter throughout the course of the year. Brown got the start last year at the beginning of the season as a sophomore, but was injured. And so Wittenberg with a change behind center in week number nine. Johnson rolling right. Cuts it back, steps up, gets hit, and he fumbled the football. Ball came free back at the four yard line, but the head linesman is ruling it down. Johnson's down by contact before the ball came free. You know, Miles Johnson is, is in a, a, a situation again, his first start here late in the season, um, I'm sure Ohio Wesleyan's got one idea, and that's stop the, the running game. Put as many people in the box and then force him to have to throw the ball. That time, uh, he did have a guy down the field wide open right down the, the middle, but he just didn't have the time to get rid of it. This is going to be a test for this Wittenberg offense to see if they can run it and also to see if, uh, you know, they can get some first downs. And it looks like in their first transition here they have to punt away yeah Garrett Gross gets the carry but needed to get to the 18 yard line that was just a play there to play it conservative with this wind and being deep in your own territory passing game we talk about the kicking game but the passing game is going to be tremendously affected especially anything over uh, five ten yards down the field well that's why you saw so many behind the scrimmage passes from Owu on that first drive it's always so interesting to me what a punt the punt bounces up over the return man's head initially. On the return, this is Alston. He's gonna be tackled near the 44 yard line. So uh, Justin Maynard with a wind at his back kicks a low line drive. So going back to Miles Johnson real quick, the psyche of a quarterback is so interesting. Coming into a season as that backup role to Colin Brown, who at the beginning of the year had such a strong start coach to then come in late in the season as a senior trying to deliver some sort of spark to this offense that hasn't been there the last couple of games in these conditions is so much more extra pressure onto the mental psyche where you try and maybe force a play. So that's going to be very interesting to see if Miles can stay within the system today. No doubt about it. And that punt, if it gets over the head of the receiver, it might be the longest punt 
in Wittenberg history. I mean, that ball was going, and it was uh, he kicked it from way, way inside his red zone. So, first down carry here for Gifford. He's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a loss of two back to the 43. We've got. 4.45 to play, first quarter. Alongside the coach, Jim Scobie and Sam Monachino. I'm Scott Leo, glad you are with us today. It's November football here in Springfield and you never know what mother nature is going to provide. Today it's wind, even though our game time temperature was in the 60s. We've seen snow flurries in these November games. Not today, warm temperatures, but Lots of wind. Booza works from the gun. Tigers with a four-man rush. Hands it off, and he'll muscle straight ahead. Gifford will out to the 47. Hard running again from Jackson Gifford, turning nothing into something there. Out onto the Tiger W logo at midfield. It's going to be a third down and seven. And so... Now help me out here, Sam. The live stats say that Ohio Wesleyan was one of four on third down. Yeah. On the that, last drive. They had those they had those three third down conversions, and one of them was because of the penalty fourth down conversion because of the penalty. They so. have to be better than one of four to have kept the drive live. They had the one that failed that they converted on fourth. Here's Booza. He's nice. going to be sacked back at the 39. Ball came out, but they were going to say he's down as well. Same thing happened to Miles Johnson on a sack at the other end of the field. Tigers do get to Booza, and it'll bring up fourth down. The Bishops will have to punt. Ohio Wesleyan was, I know for sure, one of two on fourth downs. They converted inside the 20 on that first drive, and then the... You had the horse collar yeah. on the third down, and then you had... Um, I guess statistically, if a penalty converts, yep. that doesn't, doesn't count. count. But did they have another third down that failed? The one that led to a fourth down from the 17-yard line. This is a big punt, guys. They like to flip the field. Very low. Yeah, line drive kick into the wind. It's going to bounce, and it's going to get inside the 25. It'll be down at the 21. That's about as good as you can ask for in these yeah, conditions. Yeah, it's a 40-yard punt. That really is. That was a great punt. 40 yards to flip the field, and the Tigers offense and Miles Johnson will take another crack at it here with 2.39 to go in the first. It can't be November without... Coach Scobie starting to get excited about the basketball season. Uh, Matt Croce and the Wittenberg men's team picked fifth in the preseason NCAC poll. They will play their first home game later this month on the 22nd after starting the season on the road. But another year of basketball is upon us, and Tiger women's team under new leadership excited about their season, picked fourth in the preseason conference poll. Garrett Gross is going to carry on first down out to the 25. It's that time of year when you're walking over to football practice and you go past Pam Evans Smith Arena. You hear the basketballs bouncing as you go by and you know it's close. Yeah, I like the ball that bounces right, you know. <laughs> it's hard to do that with a football. It is. It is. <laughs> Second down and six. They will hand it off and this is... Jake Salas around the end. He's going to get the first down. One of the Tigers lost his helmet here. Blocking over on that far side was Gene Nobles. And Salas will race out to the 47. Make it the uh, 43, I should say. So that's an 18-yard run. You know, when Wittenberg came out uh, and, and they were just about to go out on offense, Jake Salas came over to the sideline and absolutely got excited and was pumping up his team. And you see the enthusiasm right there on that play, uh, a big first down, a good run by him, and maybe that'll open up this offense a little bit. Whistles, flags, and a snap that never got off the ground. Rolls back to Miles Johnson. Snap and fraction, false start. So I thought for a second that Mark Pratt, the senior center, was taking Coach Scobie up on uh, his challenge and was going to try and bounce it back there. But it's one of those situations where when you're the center and you forget the count, you can't hide it. That's well, right. And it's confusing because I couldn't tell if they said the foul was on 55 or 51 because what might have happened is that left tackle might have jumped. See, and then you have one of the Owu players jump on the defensive line. Uh, but and hit the ball because the ball just kind of rolled kay. out. 
Here's a completion out to the right side as the Tigers go back to the air and find the tight end Troy Teepe out to the 47. It's a nine yard pickup. So it'll be with uh, 109 to go in the first, second down. And we'll say six to go here. I like the quick pass guys. That helps Miles Johnson out a lot. It's a gain of nine there. Johnson's gonna keep it himself around the right end, first down. And Johnson showing his athleticism, able to get out and run for a first down. And so the Tigers are in Ohio Wesleyan territory in this final minute of the quarter. And that's one of the best read option type um, situations right there where you have a lead blocker in the tight end cutting across the formation and then that becomes the lead blocker for your quarterback and that gets numbers because what that fake does it's going to collapse the entire defense within the box and then all you have to do is beat a cornerback who hopefully is being run off by a wide receiver jeremiah mensa is the injured player and he must have gone down after the play ended because i didn't see anybody that was horizontal when the play ended and then i looked back and Mensa's down on the ground, so Ellen Crosby and the trainers are taking a look at him. You know, I think some smart plays by Wittenberg right there with Miles Johnson. You really want to keep him safe. You, you really want to get his confidence. And uh, we saw early on with uh, Busa throwing these short passes, these quick short passes with, with the wind the way it is and, and just the confidence builder that that could allow. Uh, that's something Wittenberg, I think, could, could always do is throw that quick short pass and get in space because we know what can happen if you have a player in space one-on-one. -on -one. That's what everybody wants. And then, of course, Miles Johnson, a great play, as you guys said, uh, showed a little speed. I didn't know he was, it was that fast, but he, he really scampered right in front of that Ohio Wesleyan bench. Coach, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning won a combined nine Super Bowls doing that. Yeah. Get, to, get your playmakers in space with those quick passes. It's can you stay committed to your philosophy long enough that your defense can hold down and you can get a lead? Well, from what I just saw, Miles Johnson runs better than both Brady and Manning. <laughs> Here's a pass that's going to be intercepted, though. Johnson underthrows his target, and it'll be picked off. That's Drew Thornton, the free safety, who had kind of just dropped back a little bit in that zone coverage and found the football right near his face mask. And that right there, you try and... You know, you're in system, you feel like you're in a rhythm, you're reading it up, right? You have a curl route to your boundary side and that linebacker is far enough in where you think you can fit it in time. But when he has no one there holding him down into the flat, right? You had no flat route over there. The boundary curl was the only thing going on. That linebacker is able to go and take away what he thinks is gonna be there. And he's a curl flat player. So right there, great job by that defensive player being able to jump out into that spot. So the Tigers turnover, and that's kind of what started the Worcester rally last week as Wittenberg saw uh, the Scots come back from down 33-7 to to beat the Tigers in a wild finish up at Papp Stadium. And so here it's a turnover that upends the Tigers' first good drive into Bishop's territory. Get a handoff on first down as the Bishop's We'll let this first quarter clock expire. And so Caden Calhoun, the sophomore, got the carry there. We've played 15 minutes of football, no score between the Tigers and the Bishops. And so, you know, we talk about how the injuries have piled up for this Wittenberg team. Sam, it has happened at numerous positions, which is why we're seeing that next man up mentality where guys that maybe weren't even on the two deep before are not only finding their name in the game program, but they're getting some snaps. And that's a great part of the game of football is adversity. You know adversity is going to hit. It can be injury bugs. It can be weather. It can be you blow a game against an opponent that you had the game secured and the mental aspect of trying to get over that. There's so much that goes into this game, but it's all about having that so what mentality, right? Something bad happens, so what, move on, next yep. thing. Yep. And it's with everything, right? And especially injuries. Second down and five from the 40 for Ohio Wesleyan as we lift the lid on quarter number two. Booza will get the snap and hand it off and tripped up and taken down as Gifford after a short gain for the Tigers. 
it was Grant Hollinger. And Mike Knock gets most of the shine on that defensive line, but you really cannot stop talking about just the entire group, the right? And we always talk about it, Scott and Coach, how it's by far the deepest group on the field, and you can't highlight enough players from that group and what Coach Marquise has done with it. I thought Hollinger was going to miss him for a second. I did too. Just, just held on enough, made enough contact to take the running back off his feet. Booz is pressured, and he's running for his life on this one. He'll come back to the near side, cuts it back, avoids being tackled shy of the 40, and then gets down to the 38-yard line. So Boozer runs 35 yards to gain one, and it will be fourth and a long three in Tigers territory, 13.52 to go, second quarter. Yeah, they had a chance to sack him back there, and it would have been about a, gosh, maybe a 20-yard loss. Uh, now they have a chance here, fourth and about three. Tigers almost jumped off sides. They're going to go deep down the left side, and it is caught. A fourth down conversion with the wind at their back. Bishops go up over the top to Josh Hurst, who's only a freshman. And he makes the catch and gets a foot down inside the 